This is the men's room. Get it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kick drill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Raise your control, it's our standing by. We'll take caller 9844999. Ola, and you will play profile this in minutes. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. First quick check into Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, Budweiser is trolling Browns fans. Man. They've installed refrigerators <laughs> full of free Bud Light all over the city. But they stay locked and won't open until the Browns win their first game. No offense. Based on my uh, opinion of Bud Light, I would hope it's like last season. <laughs> <laughs> Go 0-16, guys. Just <laughs> do it again. <laughs> it's Bud Light. I think it's to be kind of funny if they win like the first game or something, though, right? You never know, man. Yeah. But imagine you're at a bar. All right. And they win that game. And, and then they on the, like I, I just think I just feel like I'd go crazy. What like, it does, it, what it does is it guarantees no matter what bars that they put those uh, refrigerators in that are full of beer every Sunday or every Monday. Well, they're not going to play on Monday. They're every Sunday, when a, every Sunday when a Browns game is on, that bar is going to be packed because they're going to be hoping that they can get free beer. So at least as far as uh, where someone might not want to go to a bar to watch a Browns game, just stay at home. Now maybe they're getting people to spend a little my money guess, in. My guess is that those bars are going to see a few more people as the Browns do better throughout the game. Maybe right, not necessarily like as the games come up, yeah. but as the games progress, you know. This oh, showed up in the third quarter, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest, though. I'm looking at their schedule. They ain't getting those beers. <laughs> <laughs> Two men in Tampa. Hey, it's the Browns. Who do they open with? Who do they open with? I mean, they got to play, what, Pittsburgh? No. New Orleans? No. The Jets? Maybe. But then Raiders, Ravens, no, no, Chargers, no. Bucks, Steelers again, <laughs> Chiefs. Oh, I'm like, that oh, the game. Like in week three or four, man. <laughs> Enjoy Stay that Bud Light. my friends. <laughs> Stay thirsty. <laughs> Two got a choice, Mike. <laughs> Two men in Tampa got into a heated Facebook argument about politics last week. Then one of them drove over to the, over to the other man's house and shot him in the butt. Damn. You shot him in the butt. in the ass. Mm-hmm. How heated was that argument? Where throughout the entire time you went, I'm going to shoot him in the ass. You grab your gun, get in your car, drive to your friend's house, and at no point do you actually cool down right. enough to not <laughs> shoot him in the ass. What's the, what do you think the topic was? I hope it was gun control. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Right. I have no idea. And I hope this guy was for it, but then said, you know what? I'm going to prove a point and shoot you in the <laughs> butt with an unregistered firearm. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? A heavy set man walked into a store near Toronto last week and stole about two hundred and fifty dollars worth of Axe body spray. Mm. It's not clear if he planned to sell it or wear it, but he looks like a big sweaty dude. We'll drive to New Jersey and get rid of it all. That kind of reminds me. Remember that story about the guy stealing cologne and putting it in the folds of his skin? Ew, no. man! Oh. Oh. Where all that white pussy stuff lies? <laughs> oh. Oh. I mean, what? Like, so hands free? It would just stay? Yeah. Bro, it, cologne is not. Were they like legit bottles of cologne too? Not the little tester tube oh. that they handed at the mall. I, mean, I think so. I think that was his whole thing. Ah. That is boy, oh boy. <laughs> he trips. He's gonna have quite the Man, stench oh man. about him. <laughs> <laughs> no one came uh, to a four-year-old birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese in New Jersey this month. I know that was horrible. <laughs> So the employees bought him a bunch of presents and then threw him another party a week later. Thank God. Kid's, just, 40, kid's four years old, man. Maybe because it was a Chuck E. Cheese. Why do you feel like getting in a fight? Why do you invite your kid to a party that you know none of his friends are going to come to? I mean, yeah, right, you got to know. Right? I still see, isn't that only other parents? They yeah. basically, oh, sure. Well, Absolutely. he invited everybody in his class. Oh, okay. yeah. His entire class was invited to go to Chuck E. Cheese, eat some pizza. The kid's four years old. So it's his preschool. You know, maybe. Like, how can you? Yeah, yeah come yeah. on. Do parents know when their kids are going to be the one that doesn't have anybody that comes to their party and check each Right after you throw that party. Yeah, you wouldn't realize what's going on pretty yeah. much. I was just, there were kids when I was growing up that <laughs> I wouldn't have gone to his Chuck E. Cheese party. <laughs> Does his parents know I wouldn't have gone to his Chuck E. Cheese party? They do now. <laughs> Yeah. I could have avoided that whole situation. <laughs> hey, man, back in the day. Taking a third eye view of your, of your, uh, of your kids. Well, there. you used to be able to know because when you throw a party, 
it was not like mandatory that you invite everyone in the class. You invited your right, freaking right. friends, and that was it, right? I mean, that's how it was. So you knew you didn't get invited. That was already bad enough. And you understood. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But generally, the person didn't invite you. You wouldn't have invited them. You know you don't like each other. Exactly. And you had no expectation. Like, I don't like you. Why would I want to give you something to go to your freaking house? When I was in fifth grade, and I remember his name, he invited everybody. He sent me. Uh, oh. Then, then I went to puberty and got cool in high school. <laughs> like that dude was never invited to a single party. Hell I had no! Or yeah. Hell no! Yeah. Yeah. The call come? No That's hell with him. Yeah. All right, I remember fifth grade. All right, fellas, you ready? Someone polled over eleven hundred radio hosts across the country. How many of you would say that you have a good face for radio? I think everyone has a good sure. face for radio. Okay, twenty-eight percent said that they have a good quote-unquote face for radio. And including 11% who strongly agreed. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, that's about right. We work with some savagely ugly people. I was going right? to say, uh, We really do. Mike, and everywhere we, uh, I've worked, I can, you'll meet someone whose voice you've heard for a while. And I'm not saying, like, we're going to be a treat if you meet us, but there are people I've heard, and you meet them, and you're like, Jesus Christ! Like, you know, we voted on them. Oh, did we? Oh, I did. did. You, you did. Yeah. I never did you? got that survey. No, you did, you I didn't get the survey. Hmm. Yeah, I just voted based on what I thought we all looked like. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that's serious. Uh, I don't only really have to think about it because every time I tell people what I do, they go, you got to face four. Oh, 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 yeah. You're from West Virginia. You have sex with your cousins. Oh. How many of you have dated a listener? Uh, oh, uh, no. E- yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I've been shaking her head over there. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to think back. No, 39% have dated a listener. 7% who actually married one. Huh. Wow. What would you okay. like? I've dated a listener. I haven't okay. gotten married yet. Okay. Easy now. Easy, man. Hey, man, where, <laughs> wherever you can meet him, I say game on. That's right. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Use the advantages yeah. that God gave you. All right. A, yeah. new s- <laughs> hey, hey, I do. a new study in oh, no. <laughs> a new study in the Journal of Sex Research suggests women who are emotionally unstable tend to be better in bed. No kidding. Have you guys been saying that for a million years? No kidding. No Really? It's shocking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. You were a stripper. Thanks, science. New studies. I bet you're crazy. New study. New study. A new, new study, study. yeah. Because I've never heard that before. Chewy. New <laughs> study. Groundbreaking. Just ask really? the dude at the bar. He'll tell you. Right. you know. New study. Water's uh, wet. Doctors in the UK recently removed a small cyst from above a woman's eye, and inside the cyst, they found an old contact lens. It was looking at her? That she lost 28 years that doesn't ago. Su- that doesn't surprise me, man. <laughs> Dang. It doesn't. You lose a contact, you don't know where you look. You could be crawling around on the floor thinking you lost. It might be in the back of your head. My mother actually had to help a co-worker fish a contact lens out of his eye because he lost it. And she had fingernails, and she actually went in there and she pulled the thing out. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you do it. The city, uh, the city of Paris installed a bunch of sidewalk urinals to cut down on guys peeing in the streets. Okay. Sidewalk have you seen urinals? those? No. Yeah, they are. It's literally an open urinal, so it's... If I have this right, it's kind of like a semicircle. All right, so picture like a picture like a trash can you'd find on the street, cut in half, and the back half is just kind of a wall. But the wall is maybe five feet tall. So if you took a leak, you're standing on the sidewalk. Everyone can clearly see you. It's not about privacy. It's just so you're not directly peeing on the street. That's literally it. But and people have clear view of you and all of your goods, right? You're just not peeing directly on the street. Right. So it's exactly what you're doing on the street, but, but you're it's not in a receptacle. But think oh, about it like this, saying. man. If you're going to throw trash, they provide you a trash can because people don't want it directly on the street. Right. I think it's fine. Uh, new it's, survey found. Dude, the one I'm looking at, the guy's peeing into that box, yeah. and then he's right by a river. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah. It looks right. Like, tremendous. He's not going to pee in the river. He's not going to pee on the street. Sure. 46% of Americans like the idea. Yeah, I'm down. 47% yeah, why are on the fence about it. So... I mean, I just don't want to see Dong. I guess I know it's a people don't want to see Dong, but but look, it's only going to happen. It's only there out of necessity. Yeah, they're yeah. not encouraging you to use those. They're encouraging you to use those for people like me, who otherwise are they're going to sneak into an alley and pee back there. Oh, wait for a rainy day. It's not a problem. Someone on uh, some woman on Reddit says she broke up with her boyfriend on Monday, and he responded by stealing her toilet. <laughs> that's a different move. That's a different move. That's uh, a You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure that the... Where are you going to poop now, woman? Yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah. Take that. Dude, you got Good luck. Dude. The Girl Scouts have announced that they've created yet another cookie flavor. What is that? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, my cock. Headlines are on the way one hour from now, but first the game is... The Men's Room presents... Profile this. Let's see the throw hook at the police to everyone. Now profile this is played. A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, Earth, Earth. And as you listen to the story, 
based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make. We'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Cody. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Okay, Cody, you understand how this here game is played. I do. Fantastic. And we're not getting married. People always say I do. Just like, come on, man. It's weird. Uh, our very yeah, own Mike. married in a week. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. 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 You what? sure? You got a week. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I picked up my wedding ring today. So. All right. Okay. All right. Nice work. Well, congratulations, <laughs> man. <laughs> Thank you. So our very own Mike Hawk covered the story yesterday in news, but here it is again. A 27-year-old man, he was caught trying to shoplift a bunch of stuff from a Walmart in Dana Point, California. Dana Point, by the way, it's about 60 miles up the coast from San Diego. Beautiful. I've been there. Your face said, I know where that is. Yeah, right? Is it that beautiful? It's great, man. Hang out in Monarch Beach. Okay. Well, he went to the Walmart there. He tossed all the stuff he snatched in a bag. Then he tried to walk out with it. But security grabbed the bag from him. He takes off running. And he should have just kept going because he was gone long before the cops get there. But he decides, you know what? I need to go back and get my Bible. Not only did he leave his Bible, he left his Bible in the bag that he threw all the stolen goods. So security has his bag. Well, guess what? He got his Bible back. And then he left again. But at that point, the cops showed up and they spotted him walking past. By the way, a Panda Express nearby. He was arrested. Do you believe that this man who needs his Bible, probably more than most people, is black, white, Mexi, or Asian? Oh, no, that kind of sounds like a white guy thing to do. Just to, to he, he got away with it again. Like, I think other people would be profiled more to be like, no, no, we're going to stop you. But a white guy, you know, maybe. Well, they got the cops got there as he was trying to leave the second. He would have gotten away with it. But he went back and literally went back to the bag in the security office to grab his Bible. And the what are the comes. options again? Black, white, Mexi, or Asian? No, black, white, or Mexi. I mean, I I have uh, three Asian Christian churches within three blocks of my home. Oh, dude, really? Honest to God. Huh. Oh, I don't worry. I was still like, say what? But yeah. Okay. But, All right. Fine. I don't know. I'm Who just knew? thinking. But when I think of people carrying a Bible, I think of black or, or Mexi. You say black or yeah, because he had because he had the Bible with. And I gotta yeah. be honest, I've been to that Walmart. It see, it seemed it, there was a lot of Hispanic people. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Cody, what are you thinking? You know, I, I just got I gotta go with the best judgment. Ted's been there; he's going with it. I'll go right. Mexican. Final answer. Final answer. All right, we're gonna find out if he was black, white, Mexican, or Asian next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Welcome back to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, to profile, this takes us to uh, California. We have a, a 27-year-old man who was uh, stealing from the Walmart, putting stuff in a bag. Uh, in the bag, he actually had his own Bible with him. But while he was running out of there, security snatches the bag out of his hand. He gets down the road and realizes that, hey, uh, I forgot my Bible in the bag of stuff that I stole. So he goes back to the Walmart and does get his Bible and then gets uh, arrested uh, a short time after as police saw him uh, walking in front of the Panda Express. Yes, the Panda Express. Uh, so, Cody, we asked you, did you believe this guy was black, white, to make or Asian? Uh, Ted not only has been to Dana Point, but has in fact been to that Walmart. Yeah, where, that's where he, he bought, bought a, a bucket of margaritas. The effort buckets, but it rhymes. Yeah, the effort bucket, man. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so you, uh, Ted said, look, man, when I was there, just what I saw, a lot of Hispanic folks, you went with Ted, why the hell not? Oh, no! Oh, sorry. Oh. White. Mm. Mm. Really? Yeah. yeah, it's funny. A comment came in and said, initially I was thinking Mexi, but then I thought, they're mostly Catholic. Catholics don't read the Bible. White. <laughs> <laughs> now for all the TV news all the time, and it's time for TV Time with Tim. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. That's a very good Jim Gaffigan joke. Like, I grew up Catholic. I didn't have to read the Bible. <laughs> uh, speaking of religious stuff, uh, do you, did you guys... Miles, you grew up going to church, correct? Oh, yeah. All right. All the time. Do you go to church now? No. Would you go if they served a beer? Uh, it depends on the situation. The fact that you're even thinking about it says that the game has changed. But yeah, you know, because you were like, no, I don't go. Well, see? it's uh, it's a little bit different than when I was growing up. It it it, uh, it, it to each their own. It just I think on a bigger front represents something that I'm uh, I'm probably not uh, not a part of it. But with a beer, with a you'd beer, still considered. I think a beer would probably bring them closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to, you know what I mean. 
Uh, well, there's a pastor down in California, and he's uh, talking about uh, mixing in some beers. There's nothing in the Bible that says you can't drink alcohol in a responsible manner. Why not serve beer when they're writing, reading Bible verses? I thought it was genius. We have a glass of beer and a glass of wine, and it's a comfortable atmosphere where people can not only listen to a progressive take on theology, but they can also engage in conversation. And I thought to myself, like, wouldn't it be great if a church could figure out a way to make a product where they split the profits with local community service organizations? And we were like, hey, we love beer. We love making beer. Why not do a brewery? bar right here manufacturing of the beer the mead and hopefully the cider is going to be downstairs they can have one or two as a matter of fact if they have two my sermon's always better i mean i like this guy <laughs> I uh, do. Go to the mention Sounds facebook like a great page. idea yeah, you can watch the whole interview with him but i mean so it started is like the the church they were using like they they had to get out of there or something so they started using like this uh kind of community place that had beer on tap so they had a couple beers and now they're opening up their own church slash brewery that's brilliant man mm -hmm. yeah Good I mean, even, and, and I like, too, he also says, again, if you want to mention Facebook page, watch the whole thing. He talks about how, like, like I'm not trying to trick people. He's like, it, it's no. a church. But he's like, oh, no. it is a church that has beer. Yeah, yeah. but the thing is, they're always trying to do community outreach of mm -hmm. one type or another. And you can send people to my front door to hand me a magazine. You could open a brewery. There, there's a chance you might see me. If nothing, there's curiosity to try your beer. Yeah, but I'd understand what, if I'm in your house. I'll listen to what you got to say. One of my good friends uh, growing up is a pastor, and he uh, has big barbecue pits, and he tries with kids that are having a difficult time. He tries to get them into the church through the power of barbecue and beer. So he'll barbecue all day, invite kids over, man, and they'll drink community kids or outreach. Young adults, they'll they'll drink beer and hang out, and you know he tries to get them on their feet and get them back to get their GEDs and stuff, and that's how he does it. Yeah. So hey, man, why not? And I mean, I grew up Catholic. I mean, I I thought all priests were just boozers. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's a very unique thing with your religion. Yeah, like as soon as mass is over, it's like get the booze, <laughs> <laughs> get the whiskey. <laughs> you know, I have seen a priest pull out a flask in the back of a church. Like you know, oh, like, absolutely. Like, we would assume, close off right. back of the church, like the grade school I went to, and then you'd have like community center back there, and we'd have you know you have like spaghetti dinners or whatever. Right. And he, he would just pull out his flask and take a pull. Yeah, because he'd been taking a pull off of it all day. <laughs> right. It was just right. that time where he had to when you saw. <laughs> He's been doing that for ten years, yeah. man. Uh, let's see here. We were talking a little bit about that uh, crazy story about a guy that smacked a hippo on the buttocks. And then, of course, the uh, he got in a lot of trouble. We talked a little bit about it, too, and so did uh, Trevor Noah on The Daily Show. And the L.A. Times reports on a police investigation of a video showing someone just popping a hippo. The video shows a man hop over a barrier, then quickly slap a four-year-old hippo. The hippo's name is Rosie before running away. Detectives found out last week after the video started circulating. Now, they're calling this trespassing since Rosie does not appear to be injured. Okay. This was a little bit funny, but also very dangerous. Those could have been hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> but seriously, the police are now looking for this guy. And personally, I don't think he should go to jail for this. I think jail's already overcrowded. I think what they should do is send the hippo to his house <laughs> and see how he likes it. Yeah. I mean, I still struggle with this one a little bit. I, mean, I don't know. It's a hippo. I mean, is it going to hurt that hippo that much? You give it a little love tap? Nobody's lucky he didn't get eaten. Yeah, the hippo could have. Yeah, he could have definitely done that. Yeah. I don't know. And that was that anyone's problem other than his. Like, my point of view, like, look, man, if they, I understand. Look, the zoo took safety precautions. They got a fence. They have a retain All this stuff. They assume any idiot can figure out why it's there. He's one of them who can't. You smack the hippo. The thing turned around and bit him in half. It's like, yeah. Well, oh, no, I would have no issue with yeah, that. Like, but I, I don't know. It's just like, what are you going to charge him with? Well, probably it's, trespassing. Yeah. Probably. I mean, it's not a dude thing to go to jail for 18 years. You know what I mean? But... It's not going to be the worst thing that's ever happened, but... Maybe that wouldn't be bad for Zeus. What's that? You know, you, start, slap. you ah. start messing with the animals, you fall in, you get eaten. It sets a tone. It I, does. Look, you know what I mean? I'm and, okay and, 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 you buy, is, and you can sell tickets. They're already in a cage. My assumption is that you have them in a cage because they are dangerous. And people that can't figure that out, like, the, what are they contributing that we need? Yeah. You don't understand why this apex predator or whatever the hell it might be is in a cage? Like, what was that guy doing that we needed? <laughs> Come on, man. Come they're, trying on. To, they're trying to protect it from humans in there. Watch the three opposite. drunk bros. See if one of them smacks him. Mm -hmm. I've got this on video. And does he survive? Uh, let's see. A lot of things uh, going around with uh, President Trump right now. A lot of it is racial stuff. His, uh, Omarosa has uh, wrote a book. Supposedly there's a tape of him saying the N-word. 
Uh, Amarosa, by the way, uh, isn't the only, I guess, uh, apprentice person to kind of talk about uh, the president a little bit. Uh, magician uh, Penn Jillette, he's kind of backing her up to a point. He says Trump, quote, would say racially insensitive things that made me uncomfortable. Uh, he said he didn't hear him use the N-word like Amarosa did. But, it, you know. I don't know. It sounds like the camera's off. How is this news? I don't know. That guy? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah, okay. He also has a penis. I mean, like, I I can't believe anyone is shocked by this. You're like, yeah, uh uh-huh. Really? He might have a race issue. Okay, thanks for bringing that up, Amarosa. No Uh, one was sure. Amarosa's going on the tour of every show she can. Uh, She's even kind of going down another route, not just saying he's racist. She's also talking about his, as she says, interesting relationship with his daughter, Ivanka. Uh, As long as I've known him, observed him, the way he touches, hugs, kisses Ivanka, and the way she calls him daddy. Yeah, she's just saying what a lot of people said. It seems a little weird. Yeah, again, I, like this. I, we've this already, is not yeah, new. yeah, I know. Yeah. It's always, yeah, like this. None is, of this apparently this is like the matters. The sky is blue, and you know. Yeah. Well, the other thing that'll shock you is she said she thinks Ivanka uses it to her advantage. Again, yeah. I mean, like, come right, on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Th- thanks. <laughs> Let me guess. The White House is white. You mean the what favorite, you mean the favorite child who played the favorite child the yeah. entire time? Well, that come one? on. Yeah, I mean, that, look, dude, look, daddy dies tomorrow. Who's getting all the money? We know. I mean, look, come on, man. I mean, she's already, that's, I mean, she's pining for that. She's, you could tell the type of person that pines for that kind of crap. Yeah. Well, and that goes on in a lot of families. Oh, Absolutely. That's what, you that's what I mean. But We're you like, can tell the person. We get it. You know the person who's going to be the one to pine for that <laughs> right. kind of crap. Who's the executor yeah. of the you, will? You, you, I can like, guess. Oh, who talked to into what? Oh, okay. If, uh, go figure. <laughs> uh, so ratings, you know, America's Got Talent still dominates. Repeat of 60 Minutes. Second in the race. Of 60. Of 60 minutes. I I just find that hard to believe. Right. I'm in the grave. And whatever we're going to discuss tonight, there's a good chance it's going to piss you off. So I have a repeat for 20 years. That makes you angry. Just seems like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I will give, you know, for a few years there, and you guys kind of would get on 60 Minutes about just having all the celebrities and stuff. It seems like they're kind of getting back to doing good news stories. They are, totally. I think the times dictate what you got. The times are good, Ray Romano. Ray Romano, Romano. comic right. genius tonight. Why does everybody love him? <laughs> On 60 Minutes. The show was everybody hates him, but it turns out a lot of people love Ray Romano. Al Gore, massage fan. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> uh, NCIS, of course, even though that's a repeat, stays in the top 10. Yeah, of course. It never gets out of there. I still think the NCIS crowd and the 60 Minute crowd is kind of the same crowd. A lot of the same people. Yeah. Well, it's an upper demographic. They sure. would have watched Murder, She Wrote, if that's what was on. Yeah. We remember growing up, so we're old. So we're in that demographic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it used to be 60 Minutes always, of Murder, She Wrote. it's always been on for everybody is the other thing, too. But, like, it doesn't matter. It's but, been on. But no matter what age you are when you discover 60 Minutes, everyone on that show is old. And even the older I get, I still feel like they're the same number of years older than me. I'm 49. Now I feel like they're 1,020. Yeah, well, they had the one younger lady, but then she kept... Flubbing story, so they had to fire her. We had to get rid of the youngin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I think also, too, like, it's weird, like, in the spring and the fall, right, temperature's a little comfortable. I feel like people are doing more stuff, but, like, whether it's, like, the dead of winter or the dead of summer, like, I feel like 60 mm-hmm. Minutes and NCIS are going up in ratings. But there is some good... Because <laughs> you're either like, it's too cold to go out, it's too hot. There's still that level of journalism out there where people go out and get stories and try to tell stories, you know, embed themselves, whether it's you know, uh, PBS, Nova, or, or Frontline, I'm saying, or uh, uh, Vice News. or Like, there's still certain layers to that level of broadcasting. Like, you watch the CBS Evening News. Like, they've got people, you know, when the bombs are flying or whatever sure. the hell's going on. They still they still are journalists. They're still out there doing their jobs. Yeah. But they're and the invest- enemy of the people, Miles. And, and I want you to remember journalism, that. So that, that's, I mean, that takes a lot of time to put that stuff together. So, yeah. It's cool. I don't know. Yeah. There, there, you know, and I, there is a, there's other websites and stuff coming up, too, that I think are going to help a lot of uh, n- uh, newspaper journalists that might find themselves out of right. jobs the way the newspaper's going. Mm-hmm. And, and look, I am far, I, I cannot write. I'm a terrible writer. But I do respect what writers do. And whether it's entertainment or news or whatever, like, you need writers in the world. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? It'd be nice if they had a place to work, so. <laughs> you think? <laughs> right? I mean, it's just brutal. My news it. is my friend's opinion. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, James Corden. I've been watching him a little more lately. He's pretty funny. And uh, did you guys know we're sending a probe to the sun? I did. NASA has launched its first ever mission to study the sun up close. Over the course of the next seven years, a probe will orbit the sun to study its outer atmosphere. That's how bad things are on Earth right now. <laughs> NASA's like, hey, what's the sun up to? <laughs> <laughs> the probe has already started sending back messages like, oh my God, it's so hot, you guys. <laughs> no, it's so hot. Yeah. Am I bur my shoulders red? Am I burning? <laughs> At 430,000 miles per hour, the probe is the fastest moving man-made object in history, yeah. breaking the record that was just set by Trump trying to distance himself from Omarosa. <laughs> Dude, so Corden does some funny, like, uh, weird little games, right? No. Like, I've seen one where it's like you either answer a question or you got to eat something really gross. Mm -hmm. So he had one the other night where it was uh, basically like like Miles and I would be on a team and then Robin and Thrill would be on a team. So one of us is blindfolded. They're going to bring out an item and then you basically got to nudge it with your face, <laughs> kind of figure out what it is, right? So I was like, this is a good idea, right? So it's kind of funny at first, and like the first one's like a mop or this or that, and like Corden, shockingly, is really good at it. And I, and I believe him when he says he doesn't know what it is. But the last thing they brought out reminded me of uh, our producer, Robin, because they're blindfolded. And remember, you got to nudge it with your head? Yeah. It was a snake. Oh! <laughs> and I was like, oh. And, and like when the segment ended... Corden was like still being James Corden, but he looked over to the left for half a second and just was like, that was not funny. And then like went oh, back man. to like regular him. And I was like, man, I really don't know if he, I, I don't know. He, he totally knew. do. You know, he, he didn't know. And he, he called him out on it. Like, dude, don't do that ever again. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like I, I could deal with putting my face in a dirty mop. I don't Is want to put dead? it in a sink. No. Okay. No. No, it was live. No, I would see, think dead is freaky, but live, you better find a new job. Like that's not okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -uh. No, no, no. James Gordon, down a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, because the whole thing was just awesome. I was like, that's pretty good. Like a pinata, a mop, sure. this and that. But then I was like, I play this game. It seems great. And they brought out that snake, and I was like, f this game. This game sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like his producers are mean people. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna start. I don't know. I feel like every day I'm in here, I'm telling you about a reboot of some show that I don't even know people liked. <laughs> and I don't even know the people who are watching these reboots that they have been talking about for years. But that would go to my argument. If you're going to reboot something, take something that sucked the first time around and see if you can get it right. But I'm just saying, like, people like Golden Girls. Sure. Like, you hear people talk about it, right? Or, I mean, we Christ, did. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, if somebody said, oh, they're bringing back the Golden Girls, I wouldn't, I'd be like, all right, I hear people talk about that show. They're actually working on bringing it back. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Sorry, man. Or if you had, like, the A-Team. Yeah, they, they talked about it. They made I the movie. think of a show that they're not bringing back. Right. That's the problem. I was going to say, Dukes of Hazzard, they made the movie. Starsky and Hutch, they made the movie. That was terrible. All in the family. Yeah. yeah. You can't do a movie off that. Yeah. You could do it on cable, but you couldn't do it on network. Well, designing women. Oh, God. Yeah. Whoa. I know. The original show ran for seven seasons on CBS from 86 to 93. It starred Dixie Carter, Delta Burke, Annie Potts, and Gene Smart, along with a name I can't say, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, mean, I was serious. disappointed by the I've show never because... I've heard my serious. mom talk about this show. I always thought Designing uh, Women was about a mad scientist guy who was creating hot women. Meshack? Hold on. Where is, is it? that Meshack? Uh, let's see. Dixie Carter, Delta Burke, Annie Potts, Gene Smart. Meshach? I don't know. What a horror. M E S H A C H. It's Meshach. Meshach Taylor. Meshach Taylor. M Taylor. Meshach. Wasn't Delta Burke kind of famous for like gaining and losing weight? Yes. yes. Yeah. She was famous for being. And then she was gone. She did with Valerie Burton, Bertinelli did. And then, right? we got, and then we got the racist version of her cooks instead. Like they switched each other right. out. But it's like they were on a TV show for a minute, and then the rest Paula of the Dean. time you knew them is because yeah. they gained or lost weight. She morphed into Paula else. Dean. Well, again, they say this will be a reboot, not a revival, because there's no clap in her Bibles. Uh, and Dixie Carter, she died in 2010. Oh, okay. no way. Uh, M. Taylor died in 2014. Jeez, a whiz. Right. Uh, sadly, they both died of cancer. Oh, uh, man. But, you know, like, that's what I'm saying. It, it just seems like a, a sh any show you can name, they're making a reboot out of Basically, it. Basically, that's it. If you can name it, if anyone remembers it, then they can do a reboot. You would think that somebody would have an original idea.
They have one person. No, one they do. person. Well, they, they do. They, they do. go to cable because network plays it safe. I mean, honestly, God, look, the networks know what works for them because they can't do a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's just not a lot of things they can show or do. So your most creative writers, I suspect, probably go to cable. Well, hey, man, we'll get, you couldn't do Walking Dead on NBC. No. Tons of people watch. You couldn't do Game of Thrones on ABC. Like, Tons of people watch these shows, and I'm sure the networks would love to do it, but they're like, we can't just reboot Designing Women, God damn it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's also a reason, too, that, like, generally the creators of tech companies like Google or this and that are going to be younger people. Like, you right. get to a certain age, and in business, people just don't want to do it. You go any, with what They works. go, oh, we got this. We can keep making you this much money. You don't say. Like, yeah, five years, you could make this much money, but they don't want to do that. So, right. I'm with Thrill. I'm sure there's new <laughs> scripts coming in and out, but there's somebody sitting there, some man or woman, just going, nah, we're going to stick with this one. People it works for us. Designing, designing women. Yeah. Designing. I love that show, and you will, too, again. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. All right, Mike Sketcher, a headline's coming up here in just a few minutes. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A uh, man in India takes Viagra. Next morning, kid jumps up on the bed to wake up dad and breaks it in, too. <laughs> Meanwhile, police in Ohio are called on a barking man who had obviously had quite a few. Apparently, the latest fad is to have your home tattooed on your back. A Mexican restaurant is busted for serving a hairy spider that is big and black. And oh, look, it's another flavor of Girl Scout cookies, and you know you're going to buy it. It's time for your headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, top story. The Girl Scouts have announced that they've created yet another cookie flavor that they'll be rolling out soon. Boy Scout. They promise that it will satisfy even mm-hmm. the most diehard sugar connoisseur, yet tease the public that it will not be available for purchase online. So you have to wait till you get that lovely knock on your door. The newest flavor is caramel chocolate chips. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, you just taught me something. Uh, you, so the people in the know go online and order their cookies ahead of time there, and get them delivered. There are some that you can order online. Yes. Huh. Was not. That did not. Did be not my excuse the, this year. Kind of yeah. the most popular place. I'm going to get online and order cookies. <laughs> That's when you need to reevaluate. <laughs> right. Right then and there. But there's a lot that aren't available online, Miles. Like, it's very specific, the, the ones that you can buy. That's what, but wait, look, I, I say this. You get online to order cookies. Take a step back. Give yourself 30 seconds. Determine if that's the best decision you can make. All right, I got you. And uh, you're still going to click. Should I buy it. these? Uh, we talked about this during the shot of the day. A man in the, uh, India disregarded the warning on Viagra, and now he's paying the price for it. The man took the drug the night before to help him with maritals with his wife, but the erection persisted, which he tried to get, up, get rid of by resorting to, quote, vigorous masturbation. When this didn't work, the man decided to go to bed and hoped that it would just resolve itself. Unfortunately, the man has a uh, small child that did what small children do and attempted to wake his father up by jumping on him while he slept. The child then mistakenly fell over onto his father's penis, fracturing it upon landing. Mm. You do really well with your smoky I mean, wildfire voice. It's affecting you. Why, thank you. Yeah, you really are. Yeah. I mean, That's I know you've good. been breathing in all this. Uh, That's going to be your air, new name, Smoky Wildfire. Maybe they, we can, we can, your news name, anyway. Like, you can always be my cock. Now the like, news with Smoky Wildfire. Especially when your, wild your voice wild is affected You're like like it is today with the smokiness yeah. of the wildfires. Only you. We'll just change your name to Smoky <laughs> Wildfire. <laughs> After two days of living with a deformed penis, the man sought medical help, and he's completely fine now. Again. Two days. He said it was the color days. and shape of an eggplant. Go no immediately. Kids, yeah, if you're, anything's going on with your penis, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you can hear me and understand me, go to the doctor. Tell your parents. Take it to the doctor. <laughs> Not immediately. My penis. Brilliance in the Australian correction system. A witness in the gangland murder trial recently going on was uh, put into a cell that he probably shouldn't have been put in. He was put into the cell occupied by the very man that he was testifying against. So he didn't oh, get out of that cell. Oh. I guess he just beat him to, you know, where. That's exactly what happened. Not yeah, surprisingly, when the man was attacked in the cell. No, he's okay. The witness was treated oh, for his injuries. I shouldn't say he's okay. He beat the living hell he's out of him. He's alive. Yeah. But uh, he was deemed unfit to face the courts to give his testimony. No, Bruno, for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. How are you going to put a guy that's going to testify in the same cell? How do you overlook that? Hey, because I would hey, think... Ricky. I would think the guy would be like, hey, man, you can't put me in here. You know every other thing about all the gangs and everything else in there. You don't know that one beef. Right. Sure you do. That's why you did it. It's almost like cockfighting. You know what I mean? When you're right. like, they knew. Right? They know exactly what the hell It tells me that guard's doing. in on the fight, man. Yes, he yes. is. Like, Everybody's got money. Like, let's do it. That's right. An interesting story in Ohio. A local resident called police after hearing a neighbor shouting obscenities and even barking. 
When police arrived on the scene, they found a man in a t-shirt and shorts mowing his lawn. When they inquired as to what the call may have been referring to, the man said that he was wearing headphones and was singing along, which may have been what the neighbor heard. Who let the dogs out? Yeah. I'm just... You guys know me. I listen to music that's rather aggressive. Yeah. I wouldn't just start shouting and growling and saying obscenity. Yeah, but that's you, Mike. You're not really into it like that guy was. The caller did say that the man is often drunk, so that might have uh, ah, had a yes. little bit to do it. loud. A Mexico City restaurant is getting a visit from the federal EPA after they found out what the secret ingredient in their tarantula tacos was. A video on Facebook advertises the new menu item and even shows a video of the tarantulas being torched until blackened. The only issue, the tarantulas that they're using are a protected species. Oh, jeez, oh, man. Oh, like, just boo. don't use those. <laughs> yeah, that's every headlines with that. My hawk is out. <laughs> Mike, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the return of Big Dummy. The head chef is back with Ted's meat and potatoes, no S. Sherlock, and we will drink and toast with a shot of the day. Yes, indeed, it is all true, but in the meantime, we be all about this badge. So until next time, please, do what you do best, and for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful.